The following is a conversation with Vinod Sharma. He has 24 years of experience in IT and we have discussed a variety of topics about the tech industry in general, about recessions, side hustles, and also how to beat the imposter syndrome that every developer seems to have. So make sure to like, share, and subscribe the channel and let's enjoy the conversation. Hello, Vinod. How are you doing? I'm doing I'm good. Audible? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You are. Thanks for joining my show. And it's not even started yet. So I'm just recording few episodes and it has a starting few weeks. So that's completely yeah. fine. When I started, um, I started just like that. And I was grateful for everybody who shown trust on me at that time um and um, accepted my invitation so this is the least i can do to return the favor that i have received from others and now yeah, i have absolutely. 55 episodes yeah actually i started my channel about one year ago and i was making tutorials and then some take reactions and mm -hmm. then i thought that you know maybe it's time to we have some audience around thousand people and now maybe i can start uh, uh, with some podcasts so first of all, uh, thanks for coming to my podcast. And first of all, I would like to know from you that I have seen that you have a lot of experience. So you have more than 20 years of experience. So I'm sure that you have seen a lot in the tech industry. So mm -hmm. I would like to know from you that um, first of all, what you do that I, uh, I want to know and how do you see the industry right now compared to the last uh, 20 years of experience? So where is it going and uh, how do you see it now? Yeah, sure. Um, my journey is 24 years now. I started as a, um, a marketing person that I hated. And then, um, you probably know, um, it's like a boot camp, but it's called CDAC. Mm -hmm. So after my engineering, when I couldn't find a job, I found CDAC. And then through that, I got entry into programming and then, from junior developer to senior developer, then team leader, then manager, and now senior manager. So I have done um, uh, versatile type of projects, um, local India client, as well as US client and Europe client. Lego was one of my client um, at when I was in Putney Computers. Many, so Lego many... means uh, that science-based uh, um, research group. Right. No, Lego, Lego is the Lego blocks. Okay, Lego blocks. Actually, there is also one scientific uh, research in Lego. Uh, they are doing uh, some no, particle I'm... acceleration kind of thing. Uh, yeah. So Lego, I understand. Both I understand. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, uh, one more thing. So since it's uh, 24 years ago, that is uh, maybe around 2000. So those days, which tech was more popular? Was it Java or PHP or so which it was kind of Java? Tech? It was Java. Uh, PHP was there as always. Uh, and then um, there was a new technology that was coming up, what called ASP mm. uh, from Microsoft. ASP.NET. Yeah, yeah, .NET. ASP.NET came later, but it was ASP. And then uh, the combination was VB6 in the back end and uh, ASP and baby script in the front end. So I so chose to go, not go to Java, but go to Microsoft. Uh, stack which is ASP, VB script, uh, VB6, and Microsoft SQL Server. And I believe which uh, later became the ASP.NET, and uh, now we yeah. have .NET 6, 7, 8. Yeah, so actually my stack is also .NET, so this is actually interesting. A uh, little bit things I have heard also, but uh, this is uh, maybe mm -hmm. uh, that back, that much back. Also, there was some Windows fonts or something like that, right? Microsoft fonts, yeah. which was yeah. integrated with .NET. VB6. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in VB6, you can make projects as Windows form or console application or a DLL. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we create the project in DLL and then use them in a front end ASP. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so actually one more thing. So for example, nowadays it's uh, most of the folks are using JavaScript. So JavaScript is very popular. So even I'm using, everybody is using, so there are lots of frameworks. So uh, many people sometimes think that uh, right now the web dev environment has become a lot fast and you know, things are moving too quickly. So was it like that before, like 20 years ago or 10 years ago, or was it always same? It was moving very fast and uh, mostly junior folks, they say that, you know, there is too much things to learn and we don't know which to learn and which to skip. 
So this is a big problem these days. I think the big difference was now you have a front end developer, back end developer, and full stack developer. At that time, most of the developer was doing everything from the front end to back end to database, including DevOps. So now within front end, there are too many things. But when I was a senior developer, I was doing end to end. So it still things was too many at that time as well. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, so actually regarding these frameworks and too many frameworks, there is also one more thing that mostly junior folks say is that is something uh, called imposter syndrome, that there are so many things to learn. Like even in mm -hmm. front end, there are uh, 10 kinds of CSS frameworks. There is Tailwind, there is uh, MUI, mm -hmm. there is, now these days there is ChatCN and there are numerous things. And also in JavaScript, there are numerous frameworks. So what uh, most of the junior folks feel like is that, you know, maybe we don't know enough uh, what is happening. Maybe I'm a fraud. Maybe people will catch me. Somehow I'm just Googling and doing stuff. Uh -huh. and sometimes maybe asking ChatGPT to do things. So do we really avoid this imposter syndrome? Some like sometime in the, in our career or it stays always with us. Like, what do you think of this? I think I would answer in two ways. Okay. Number one is not having the foundation is definitely something that I have seen in many people today. So they just jump into learning React without having a any kind of foundation on programming. When I started, I started with C and then gradually I built my foundation around concept, right? And that always gave me a strength that any you gave me, give, you give me any situation and I will learn it, whether it is a uh, visual, um, Basic. whether it is a um, .NET programming, oh. C-sharp programming, or even um, Microsoft app programming. You, but the problem that I see today is that people don't have that foundational knowledge of how to problem solve, how to, uh, uh, what, programming basically mean the, the, uh, the simple concept of what object orientation is, how to normalize the database. I, I'm, I'm picking very smaller example, okay? Mm -hmm. if, you, if you focus on that, then you can, and you can counter your imposter syndrome, but you cannot just fake it. And there, yeah, are, there are many things that you could do around imposter syndrome. What I'm trying to say that you have to have some foundation. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, regarding this, uh, you have mentioned that uh, many folks are uh, learning React without foundation, which is definitely true. Uh, but do, do you think that there is a, some, some sort of rat race kind of thing going on? For example, everybody thinks that this is the new cool framework. I have to learn this, then I will get a job. Mm -hmm. And everything is focused on getting a job because, uh, I mean, everybody needs jobs. So they want a job. So they are learning the cool frameworks and they think that, you know, once I get a job, I can take care of the foundations. So is it some kind of race going on, do you think? And that's why people are doing this because nobody would love to have this thing, this imposter syndrome. Everybody wants a way out. But uh, do you think this is a reason? Some I think, race kind of thing? Well, race or wish, right? well wish like if if i just learn enough i can get an entry um which is okay right once you're in the yeah. team you will work on the real life project and all but then you face the challenge that you are not able to get a entry in in interviews you are not able to perform how many people that you probably have encountered who's saying, oh, why they ask DSA? Do I need to learn DSA? Yeah, yeah. spend three months and you will be okay, but uh, unless otherwise not. So your, your question is, I think everybody wants job is starting their third grade, um, third, um, third year of engineering. They just want to get a job um, and high paying job, uh, but they don't want to spend time in um, strategizing it, plus uh, um, building their, what exactly they're offering to their, their employer. 
So yeah, uh, I mean, I, I don't know if we call it race or just the wish, wishful thinking. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, so what happens is, uh, I think um, this is the uh, wishful thinking in the sense uh, they think that, you know, uh, maybe we can trick our way into a job. Maybe uh, somehow I will get into and then I will take care of the other things, which uh, generally doesn't uh, work very well because actually DSA and other things are hard and uh, maybe they just want to build some projects and this kind of things, which I'm not blaming. Maybe at, at a particular situation, this is fine. At one point of time, even I used to think like this, that, you know, I will not do DSA, but somebody, we have to do it sooner or later. So that anyway, so just uh, moving away from that. Uh, one more thing that many developers are saying, not saying, I mean, this is also another problem, is uh, when they're building projects, let's say, when they are doing the good stuff, uh, oftentimes what happens is they're not consistent. So let's say they started building one project. It could be anything. It could be a game. It could be... Can I, a, can I go back yeah. to the previous question and add something there? Yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead. It is okay for somebody to learn the surface level thing and get a job and then perform and then in that job. I think that would be okay. As long as this person is prepared to handle what comes next. Because when you are in a job, your first job, there will be training, there will be people who will be there to help you. There will be challenging problems that people will give you to solve, right? It's a real yeah. life projects. As long as this person goes with an attitude that I will be able to sit with the problem, will not scare, will not just run after chat GPT or Google search or whatever, just to find a solution. If this person can spend enough time to understand the problems and figure out the logic that we use as an experienced developer, how to apply our thinking, how to apply your problem solving logics to a problem, uh, B, act like a detective that uh, um, I will analyze, I will understand, and then I will apply a solution rather than thinking, I wish somebody can tell me the solution and I can just code it, right? So if somebody can do that for next six months, one year, they can obviously perform. Um, so yeah, that is possible. It is possible to just learn a surface level, um, hopefully get an entry and then learn everything. It just become too much um, with so many things going on in your work. On top of that, you're learning and you're spending like three times more time to problem solving and learning and, and, and trying and error. So I just wanted to answer that question because that is possible. One of the strategies that people have used and work great, it just require a lot of efforts afterward. Yeah, I have heard many of my friends who initially spend maybe 16 hours for their work and then they become, when once they become good. Yeah, yeah Even and that's also. great, right? <laughs> that's great. Right? And, and yeah. all I'm saying that, go with that mindset. And mm -hmm. once things little bit cool down, like we are a little bit, uh, like little bit, we know how to approach a problem. Then it becomes two to three years. Work. It's only take two to three years for you to get in a job. Um, and the first two, three years, if you go with the mindset that whatever it takes, your friend did 16 hours. Yeah. Spend 16 hours. But once you are two to three years experience, then you don't have to just like things will cool down. You will have better opportunities. Companies will come after you at that time. Yeah, yeah. So the so yeah. initial two, three years is the hurdle. Yeah, so uh, moving on to the next topic uh, that I also wanted to uh, ask you is uh, oftentimes uh, many developers say that uh, when they're doing their personal projects or any projects, one problem they face, uh, it's a maybe problem of mindset is that is with consistency. So what happens is they work for projects for two to three weeks, uh, maybe one month. And then what happens is, you know, I don't like this project anymore. Maybe, uh, you know, it's not cool enough. It was cool when mm -hmm. I started. And now I will start with another thing. And what happens is we have 12 incomplete projects in a year and nothing uh, seems to work. So I'm sure you have also seen this thing. 
And uh, so is there a way how to get around this thing, how to stick with one project and find it interesting? So for example, we know of great software like Linux and uh, many other things, uh, many open source software that started small and gradually over time, over time, it, it became such huge software. And what happens with uh, many of us is that uh, we just cannot stick. Uh, it doesn't feel good enough after a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. So what do you think of this? It's a serious yeah. problem. This thing. And, and I, I will say that I've seen the other challenge too, when people wait for the ideal project and don't start anything. So I've mm -hmm. seen that too. <clears throat> I, I, want, I, I offer somebody that I will help them to build something but then um, it's been almost a month and they couldn't decide a project um, because they want to per pick a perfect project that they will do for whatever number of years. So it doesn't work that way as well. I recently interviewed somebody named Yoon for my podcast mm -hmm. and I asked her uh, this question that she has done many projects, like hundreds of projects. And mm -hmm. how does she start? And she was saying, I only the very first first project that she did is a login page and a home screen. That's all. Mm -hmm. And that was her project. So she learned something and she built it in a project. Then as she was learning more things, she was expanding that project with this new learning to try those things. And then if you get an idea, she would just add, keep adding to this project, which was just a small idea to something big. I think that approach is a way better approach than um, uh, either waiting for a perfect project or starting a project with an idea and um, then abandoning it to a different idea. You could mold it, you can, you can, um, but bottom line is though, um, as long as you building something, your idea can change, your projects can change, but as long as you're trying, experimenting, you will get there. And one last thing, you said you use the word side hustle, right? Uh, I didn't use it right now, but yeah, that's what I mean, wanted to talk about. Like okay. side projects, side yeah. projects, yeah. Side project, okay, yeah, yeah, different thing, right? Side project and side project, you do something to learn. Yeah, That's actually, I, I said personal projects. Personal project, side project. Mm -hmm. I have done many of them, and my intention always was to learn something. So mm -hmm. I would learn, I would, sorry, I would learn something and I want to experiment it, and I would start a project. So I think it is okay to start a project, spend some time, and abandon it to something else. I think it's completely okay. If you're talking about a, a project that you want to convert into a business, that's a different thing. But if you're talking about a project, site project, that you started to learn something, I think it's completely okay to start it, learn it, finish it, and then move on to the next one. Yeah, actually, uh, when I said that... Uh people are moving from project to project. I meant to say about side hustle only that the project becomes uh, good enough that you have some users. So oh, I okay. just want, okay. yeah. I just then wanted I to ask answer. that only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how, how can somebody, let's say start small. So let's say for me example, I will give my example only. So maybe around one year ago, I started one project, which I abandoned, not abandoned. I mean, it's uh, maybe I have postponed it. So it, it was some kind of a project of called, uh, you can say a, an RPG maker. So in uh, you have games, RPG games, where you can play as a character. So it was like a game engine in the web where you can drag and drop tiles and other things. And you can basically, I have created some animations and you can use those animations. And uh, like, that was the idea that uh, it, will mm -hmm. be a, it will be a game kind of thing. There are already projects like this. It's not like I'm building the first one. So I, I just try to do that thing. So maybe after working for a few months, I have postponed it. I don't remember why. Maybe uh, something else I thought of. So mm -hmm. how can we start building small or any developer start anything? It could be anything. Start small and gradually incrementally build it over without losing interest, of course, because what happens is uh, consistency is a big issue. I mean, it's a problem I understand. So how to get around this thing? How to, how to overcome this thing? 
and make it big so that uh, we have some users at the end when some other people can also yeah. use it and maybe it can be open source and some other developers also wish to contribute so how can we make it big or useful you can say yeah great question great question <clears throat> so many developer would start a side project to become an entrepreneur and and have an application with many users the problem that they face or the mindset shift that they face is they start a project because they are engineers. They know how to code. They know that they don't. They will not have to pay anybody to be a programmer and build an application, right? It, it's it's already yeah. there. That's the least that um, um, they could use. They could uh, utilize their knowledge for. The problem is the product building is more than coding. It's it's a tiny portion of the product is the coding. What product building need uh, require you to go beyond uh, technology stuff, like understanding what problem that you are trying to solve, uh, be able to act like a subject matter expert in the domain, uh, create persona of your users, be a product manager, be a, be a um, marketer even, to be able to sell the idea to your ideal customers, consumers, and then use that feedback to completely change what this product was about, what this project was about, right? Uh, you can go back and see the success story of many products that it started with idea number A, but as they got the feedback from the users, the idea evolved and within three or four iteration, the idea became completely different. It was the, still the same application, same project, but they were able to go beyond this pride of a developer that it is my idea and I know this is gonna work to, this is the problem that I'm trying to solve for ABC users, and that's what they actually want, not what I was thinking they want. Does it make sense? It, it's it's uh, more abstract right now. My answer is very abstract, but if you really want to build a product as a side hustle that you want to really grow for thousands of users, the the skills that you need is way beyond the technical skill that you have today. Yeah, you have sense. to be adoptable. Uh, first, you have to be able to research the user, talk to them, market them, sell them, get the idea, and then convert your application, your idea to completely different idea based on that feedback. So, I, so to answer your question, a developer would spend time on an idea Meanwhile, there are 50 other shiny ideas. Those are missed opportunity. If you focus on one idea, you're going to miss all those. I call them shiny object. Yeah, yeah so definitely. Every two month, three month, you will have this amazing shiny object that looks amazing to begin with. And then you would start that. And then you will hit the ceiling that as a developer, this is all you could have done. Now you don't know how to go beyond, which actually require all those non-technical stuff that I was talking about. So you, you stuck there, you are still taking all the possible action that you can take, but now it's not about the action, it's about the outcome, right? Yeah. Yeah. So now, meanwhile, you have hit the 50, 60 other ideas, you've seen other ideas and you want to move on to. How I controlled it is through my quarterly planning. Mm -hmm. So for each quarter, I set a goal. And I, I would say that these are my three or two primary focus area. These are my two exact project and outcome. And if I get 50 new shiny ideas, I would say I'm adding those to a notebook or a notion guide or whatever, right? You could have anything. I'm going to add them to a queue on a June 30, I will go back through that list and pick the top two, three ideas. And then I will stick to it. Most of the time, by the time I'm there, whatever idea that I'm working on, I compare them with others. 
and I will pick either keep the same idea that I am keeping or move it to something else. So that's how I was able to control my temptation to switch to idea through uh, uh, having a very concrete focus for one quarter. Mm, so it's like quarterly planning for our own career or ideas, which is... Yeah, yeah. So you, you set your big goal for the quarter, break it into weeks, and then for that week, you know these are the three or five items, maximum five items that you will be focusing on. I do that. I mean, I still do it uh, for, for what I'm doing uh, for this uh, quarter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, very important. And I think you have hit another very important point, and that is actually for building a successful product, uh, developers need a lot of non-technical things, which mm -hmm. maybe, maybe they are not willing to do. And that's why what happens is uh, they see that it's not growing or something is not working. So let's move to another shiny idea right. because maybe this idea is not good. And uh, maybe that is the big reason. So do you think that uh, once let's say a project is more or less done, like maybe it's not perfect, it's imperfect, but it's uh, maybe the prototype is done. Developers should try to link with uh, maybe get some friends who can do the marketing or other kinds of things. So maybe who can brainstorm together that how to, uh, how to get some users, let's say. And then according to user feedback, we can decide what we will do. So do you think that this is like a business skill? This is not really a development skill. So oftentimes I think that developers are not really good at this, maybe getting mm -hmm. users or these things. So how important is this? Like making a team once your product is ready or approaching it from a business point of view. So how essential do you think this is? Yeah, it's a, I, I highly recommend what you just said uh, to do that, basically involving the other people. Uh, you will have a decision to make whether you want to grow yourself into those areas, super useful skills, uh, growing yourself as a marketer or product manager is something that will give you a lot of credibility, credentials and recognition versus if you stick yourself to just being a developer. I'm not saying that you should do that. I have done it for me, um, but I've seen really good people who just stick with the technology and become architects and all. They are amazing as well. So one option for you is to, yes, expand yourself into those area, areas. Or second, there's a book from Benjamin Hardy it's called Who, Not How. Mm. Um, and uh, um, there was a problem that I faced when I I started a web agency 10 years ago and I had three offshore developers who were working for me. So I got an opportunity to talking to Benjamin Hardy, writer of that book, two years ago. And uh, I asked him that I start many initiatives, but I, at a certain level, I cannot I couldn't take it beyond that. Like for this web agency, my bottleneck was marketing, how to get new customers. And I couldn't get it, even though I tried a lot. And he said, uh, he first he recommended reading that book and said, um, whenever you have that situation, your mind will say that, okay, I'm going to go and find how I will solve it, how to do marketing. Instead, you go find who can do it for you, and then you hire that person. Mm -hmm. which is similar to what you were saying that at that time expand that you expand your team bring um bring other people i'm not saying bring your friends because your friend may have the similar type of skill that you have but you identify somebody who is doing good in terms of the product uh, marketing or product visioning um and you add that person to your project and that would be the right way to do, right way to grow your product to the next high level. So when you include another person, you expand your skill, multiply by that person's skill. Yeah, so it's like in business, uh, you don't have to know everything. You hire people. You don't have to know everything, yeah. Hmm. We, we hear that all the time, but it does not make sense until you actually experience that. And you fa you you solve one of the problem using some uh, another person, and nowadays at my full time work, that's all I do. 
I most of the time I'm I'm yeah anyway that will go deeper but yeah I have a, a big team that that mm. helped me do things yeah so also um, uh, uh, regarding this only uh, so um, we have discussed that uh, so for developers who are mostly into technical stuff so it is essential that they should be having uh, some some other team members who are handling the other things that mm -hmm. often developers either are not willing to learn or if they learn that's good that's what you just said so uh, what happens is um, so how do you see the importance of soft skills so for example coding is a hard skill or technology domain knowledge is hard skill like i am solving bugs doing tasks and other things but let's say reaching out to people and uh, like you can say networking or uh, simply simply trying to get other people and also convincing them that why he, they should join your team and uh, basically yeah. i am saying the domain of soft skills so how important is soft skills for in the in the tech industry you would say especially from developer point of view yeah extremely important i have spoken so much about soft skill and uh, it's not just the the known one which is like presentation communication but simple things your interpersonal skills how you handle things how you what attitude you take your problem solving is skills, how do you see the problem and how you handle it, right? How you handle your challenging situation. All those are part of the softer skill and these so are one, super, uh, super crucial. Uh, yeah, one very essential thing that happens in, let's say, day-to-day -day job is uh, developers are, let's say, doing their code and everything, but convincing your manager or uh, whoever is owning the product that mm -hmm. what kind of job you're doing or even the users. Let's say mm -hmm. uh, developers developers are speak in a technical language. So even let's say only their team lead and other developers will understand. But often what happens is not technical people who may be using your product. It can be users, it can be your manager, it can be product owners or anybody. So they they need to get the same thing in in let's say user friendly language that uh, what this product is doing. I don't care about the technical stuff. So in that case, what happens is if somebody is too much into technical stuff and they are ignoring the soft skills. And this is also important for, as, as we have discussed, for improving your product, let's say to get more people, to get mm -hmm. users, you cannot be too technical for that. So how, like, uh, what should you, uh, I, would, I would ask the question in this way. So let's say junior developer who, who is into the industry for a few years. So how should they prioritize, like focusing on their hard skills, like their coding and then technical things and their soft skills. So what should be focus the on this? this one scenario that you talk about, okay? That, uh, um, and there are a couple of ways you can solve that. And that um, obviously in the beginning, you have to focus a lot on your hard skill, okay? Mm -hmm. But the small talk is something that can tremendously help you. What is that? Is that your ability to, or you don't even have to have an ability. You can just prepare your 30 second pitch and, mm -hmm. and um, do this, like prepare a 30 second pitch of what the job that you do and then exactly what you're doing this week. If you just prepare a 30 second pitch that include what you do for that company, what is your role is and what you're exactly doing this week, you deliver that to the people you meet in hallway or or your uh, meeting calls and all with an intention that somebody will ask you, tell me more about this one thing that you said. What exactly are you doing here? You said you, you're you building um, a, a, a front end using React something. Tell me more about it. And then you get three minutes to talk. Yeah. In those 30, uh, 30 second pitch and three minute talk, try to avoid using a highly technical words. Um, and this is something that has saved my job. Um, just this one skill. Hmm. Um, Maybe we can was, talk about. Yeah, yeah, about for that. sure. Yeah. <laughs> so I yeah. was, I, I, in, I was working in office, it's like 20 years ago. Um, and then I was returning from my water break or something. And then I, I I met somebody on the hallway. He was a director and he said, um, 
are you new? I haven't seen you here. And I just joined two months ago, uh, a company in Noida. So I said, yeah, I joined two months ago and uh, I am in this XYZ team and I'm working on a project that take data from SQL Server and uh, fill an Excel file. And it's mm -hmm. really fancy, it's color code and all. 30 seconds, less than 30 seconds, I said, I said that. And I said, oh, wow, tell me more about it. And now, like, I mean, Joan, I, I said a lot of things, but within th three minutes. So I, I told him more about it and said, can you show me this? Hmm. We went to my desk. I closed all the applications and I then started and it's open Excel file at his input, color coding and everything. It was really fancy show. So he took me to another manager, asked her to put me in her project and said, what you was looking for, he already built it. Mm. Moved him to your project. And that was the third most visible project in that company at that time. So I was yes. moved. Two, two weeks later, they announced layoff. My yeah. previous team was gone because they were just doing research. And, and the people who was in this third most visible project was in tech. Oh, interesting story. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, all happened because we encountered and I delivered the 30 second pitch that did not have any technical words, but grabbed his attention. So 30 seconds is like the pitch. So for example, in YouTube, we hear that in 30 seconds, you have to hook your user and then the exactly. user will stay for three minutes. And in three minutes, if they are interested, they will stay with your channel. They will subscribe maybe and they will stay with you. So yeah, very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is just something I just thought of. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, it was not, no, no, just, just, uh, I, this is the first thing that came to my mind when you said 30 seconds, three minutes, and then I just moved to something else. Yeah. Sure, yeah. sure. So anyway, it's a uh, very fun talking with you and uh, maybe I will take one last question and uh, then yeah. we can, uh, we can close it. So what do you uh, like um, in general, like uh, what do you see the tech uh, industry? going forward in the future though. So for example, right now people are in a little bit anxiety that there are layoffs going on. There is AI, AI will mm -hmm. take over our jobs or not, whatever, what will happen, who knows? So you have more than 20 years of experience. So you you have like, you have a huge range of vision, I, I can say. Like for me, I can only see four years, but you can see 24 years. So where do you see the tech industry? So I'm sure that you have also seen the dot-com bubble as, as well as the financial crash. You have lived through that. Mm -hmm. So how do you see the tech uh, industry right now? And where do you see it going forward in the future? That should developers be worried or not worried? And uh, like in general, what do you what do you think of this? Yeah, the way I see it, if you can be the person who understand what your company is trying to do by building the project or the product, if you understand that, and then show the value that you are contributing to that vision and most people would fixate it to oh i'm just gonna stick to react or php or java but if you can make your vision slightly bigger to understand why a client is spending thousands of dollars on building a project right um, because they're trying to solve a business problem not because they are very uh, tech folks or something right they're trying everybody who build a project or a product, they have a business problem that they are trying to deliver a solution to. So this is what I would say that there will be a lot of technology as a technicians, as an engineer, we have signed up that we will learn whatever will come to a cross. If it is uh, um, <clears throat> all these new technology, Web3 technology, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we will learn it. But as long as you're getting to this bigger vision, aligning yourself to the company and client vision, you will be better off than anyone else. Hmm. So it's like uh, we have to prioritize uh, like what we are doing and it's not only limited to technical knowledge. We should, mm -hmm. we should be knowing what we are doing and not simply fixing bugs and making tasks is right, what I right. understand. Hmm. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So... 
it's a uh, very good talking to you and uh, thanks for being my first guest so i will close the video here yeah sure